Hello and welcome to episode 144 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and on this all digital version, I bring you tidings of good news and joy from the fine people of Adobe. Because yet again, Adobe has updated Adobe Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, and Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm referring to the June 2025 update. While this is not a major update, Adobe usually does these in like April or in October, this small update has a huge impact on many photographers, especially those of us who have to shoot at high ISO. Now, for years, Adobe had huge issues with noise reduction, and many people buy their first plugins because of noise reduction or noise issues or sharpening things. Adobe has radically changed that now in this version, and you might make the case that these plugins are no longer necessary. Now, just a quick history lesson, back in the dark, dark days, noise reduction was done using a feature called manual noise reduction, which they used to just call noise reduction because there was nothing manual about it. it it was all manual. Now, noise reduction had some controls here, and you would play this really crazy dance between luminance and detail and trying to get the best results for your noise reduction. And they were overwhelmingly eh. They just weren't very good. Adobe then introduced an AI-based noise reduction called Denoise, which is just fun to say. But the problem was with Denoise, it created an additional file. It had to do all of that work in DNG. So now you had another file to manage in your catalog or on your operating system. You had more disk space being taken up, and it also made syncing up between images really difficult. And all of that has gone away in this June 2025 edition because everything is now seamless and can be done natively to a camera raw file. So DNG or native camera raw from a camera company, the workflow is going to be exactly the same. Now, first of all, let's zoom in on this image, which was shot with a relatively high ISO. And you can see all of this noise here. It is a lot. And in previous versions of Lightroom, getting rid of this and keeping the detail was really difficult. And also the workflow was a little bit different. In older versions of Lightroom, you would always start with sharpening first, because when you did sharpening, and let's just pull out some numbers here just so you can see the sharpening here. Sharpening would not only bring detail back to the things you wanted detail to, but it also brought detail back to the noise. So you would come in and you would use a feature called masking and you would just crank up the masking all the way, which we'll go into in a moment. And that would reduce the masking of the noise. So you weren't sharpening the noise. And then you could come down and do noise reduction now called manual noise reduction. That workflow has changed. Let's take this back to zero. Let's take our amount down a little bit. Let's take our radius down and get those back to a lower value. The workflow now is pretty good because it's in the order of the actual detail panel. You're first gonna start with denoise. Now, in this case, the results are instantaneous, and that's because I've already run this on this particular image. But if you were doing this for the first time, you would get a status bar, and that is something important to discuss. This does take a little bit more time, but so does running things through a plugin, or so does creating a separate DNG file. Yes, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but the results are, look at them, they're amazing. We have a significant reduction of noise. Now, there's still a little bit of noise in this particular image. You could come into the slider for denoise, and you you could crank this up or down. Let's go significantly higher with this. And that's a pretty good looking result. Now, if we were to come in and zoom in a little bit more, let's switch our uh, additional zoom value here to say 400% and zoom in here, you can see that you're definitely losing some detail in the image because the denoise is so high. Let's go back to the default of 50. Now you'll see some of that noise come back, but look at the detail in the image here. Now there's one thing to point out. In manual noise reduction, color is usually set to a default of 25. And if you double click on this, sometimes that will fix that. And that even though we're not having to really use manual noise reduction anymore, I still recommend the default settings for color of 25, 50, and 50. Especially if you're gonna work with any older files that have a lot of color noise in them, this still handles this well at the default values. But for denoise here, we could come in and increase this a little bit more and start to really knock down that noise. And it's all done with a check mark and a single slider. Now, a few additional things in the detail panel that have happened and also to be aware of. Raw details gets automatically checked and raw details just leverages the raw technology to get more detail and more color out of the particular image. It's automatically checked. You have no control over it. You have an exclamation point next to raw details that if you click on it will tell you exactly what I just said. So you could ignore that. There is a feature called super resolution, which cannot be used when you turn denoise on. Super resolution will essentially double the size of the file. 
I'm on the fence about this personally because one major downside of Lightroom Classic is there's no real good way to know how big something is in this program. Unfortunately, Adobe does not have good controls for the crop tool. You still usually have to go into Photoshop to really see how big your information is and also relate it to the pixels per inch and then do a proper crop. That is something that's probably still needs some improvement, but you cannot use super resolution even if you wanted to and have denoise on at the same time. So if you wanna do super resolution, you gotta uncheck denoise, check super resolution, wait for it to build its particular preview, and then you get to introduce yourself to the fun and the joy of manual noise reduction, which is neither fun or joyful because that was sarcasm, and sometimes that's not conveyed in these all digital versions of Photo Kitchen. Now, our super resolution dialog window is almost done here, and nothing really changes until you zoom out and then zoom back in. So we'll come into our navigator panel here, we'll go out to 100% and then come over, and you can see how far we're zoomed in comparatively if we turn off super resolution and then you'll see the image zoom out again. So it's about double the size to be sure, but we're not gonna use that. We're gonna turn on denoise because it's just so good. Look at that result there, very nice. Now, you may see some improvements in denoise by coming down to sharpening here. And if you've never done any sharpening in Lightroom Classic, here is a basic crash course. If you're on the Mac, put your thumb over the Option key. If you're on Windows, put your thumb over the Alt key. Hold that keyboard shortcut down. When you go to any of these sliders, what happens is you get a black and white version of the image and it becomes easier to see where the sharpening is going to apply. So a lot of times people will plug in very specific numbers here. There's no reason to do that. Just drag this back and forth and see how the sharpening looks. And it's so much easier to see when you're working on a black and white image. Now, in the case of a mount, you're getting a black and white. In the case of radius, you're almost getting an embossed look, but you could really see where those lines are gonna come out at. So in this particular case, somewhere close to 80, 79, and a radius of 1.5, that looks pretty good. Now detail, never touch. All the detail is gonna do is increase detail in finely detailed areas. Really only fur or feathers might ever need this additional amount of detail, but what you will do is increase the detail for noise. So leave it alone at its default of 25. Masking controls where sharpening gets applied. If you hold down that option key, alt key trick that I just talked about and drag that slider over, what happens is you go from a completely white image to kind of a reverse negative. Anything that is white is going to be sharpened. Anything that is black will not be sharpened with these settings. So we're gonna go fairly high here. We're gonna come up and what we wanna do is we just wanna increase this to the point of where the noise is no longer there, which in this case looks to be, again, somewhere convincingly, same with the amount, somewhere in the 70s to the 80s. Now, what's interesting about this is you used to have to go really high, like all the way up to say 90 to 100 to really get that noise to go away. But now with denoise, you don't have to go so high with masking, which means you're still applying more of that sharpening where you need it and not applying sharpening to noise because of this simple checkbox. Now there's nothing stopping you from coming back up to denoise here. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but it goes without saying, you wanna be at 100% when you're looking at your image here. So always be at 100%. And if you can't find that easily, go to your navigator panel in the left-hand column. I have mine collapsed down here, but click on 100% and then move the box around to an area that has detail that you want to look at and also that will demonstrate the noise in the image. So by being at 100% here, we're now looking at this and maybe we can increase the noise a little bit. And don't be afraid, you could go really high with the slider or really low with the slider. Just give it a second to re-render when you release. And don't forget where you started from. Come to the eyeball for the detail panel, click and hold down your mouse button. You will turn off the preview for the detail panel and you will see what this image looks like without denoise and without sharpening. And even better, so easy to do, no plugins, no additional files. One additional thing here, we're going to zoom out. We'll come back to the navigator panel. We'll click on fit. So we'll come out of here and we'll also click on this little arrow all the way over to the left to collapse this down. This image had a significant amount of work already done to it. We have done global adjustments. We have done retouching with the remove tool. We've also done a fair amount of masking here. And some of these edits leverage a lot of the new AI technology inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Another new feature here at no additional cost to you by watching this video is the new AI status tool. Now it's not a tool, it's just a warning. And when it's orange, what it's telling you is that there are areas in this image that need to be updated based upon any changes that you've made. Whenever you see this, what you wanna do is click on this. You could see all of the artificial intelligence that you've used. 
if you were worried, you could go through and do individual updates by clicking on them and clicking on the little recycle or little refresh icon here. But in this case, we'll go ahead and click update all. Now, depending on the amount of work that you've done and the amount of AI work that you've done, you will get a status telling you how long this is going to happen. And be prepared when you're updating your AI status that that time could be significant. So there is a penalty for all of this technology. But I think we could agree, even though that I'm now going to end the video by watching a status bar go across the screen, that all of this technology is just going to benefit you. And I think you're going to really like the results. Hey, speaking of like, why not go down and hit the like button while watching the status bar? Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have, thank you very much. Sorry for making you watch this status bar. And please share this with anybody who's maybe interested in leveraging this technology, reducing the noise, saving money on plugins, and while it might not seem like it, also saving time overall in your workflow. Until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from uh, a photo kitchen episode watching the status bar at the end of the video.